to preach tonight. Um, if you'll join in with me here as we begin reading, let's turn to the word of the Lord tonight, Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Don't think that anything going on in this world, God does not see and know what's taking place. The inner secrets that we don't even know about that seem to be hidden, God knows everything going on. When it reaches heaven, God remembers everything that has happened. If you'll say, God, bless the word. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. I'm going to let you be seated. I don't want to tire you in the reading standing. I appreciate you honoring the word of the Lord. But if you'll follow with me, verse 6, I'd like to read on. And I, I do appreciate you um, uh, tonight so very much. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. Everybody say double trouble. He said he's going to double unto them according to their works. In the cup which she hath filled to her double, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I set a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. I told you, God is going uh, to give her reward. For strong is the Lord God who hath judged her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of tor her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, everybody say one hour, is thy judgment come. In one hour, you know, uh, we worship God or, and we, we sing praises. And that one hour goes by fast, don't it, sometimes. But in one hour, God can place judgment upon her wickedness. God, the Bible says, will call the church back in the twinkling of an eye. That's fast. That's really fast. Just blink one time and see. That's how quick we could go back to be with the Lord. Verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep. That's the people who are out for the, who are out for the money, the buy and sell. The merchants, they'll weep, they'll cry because they won't be able to sell no more and mourn over her. Now this woman is that spirit. This woman is what we preached about last week uh, that is like a devil. It's a spirit and spirit of fornication. And uh, she's going to um, seduce uh, the world and the influence through her. Uh, for no man buyeth their merchants anymore. They're merchants of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and, and, and thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory. All the elaborate things that's been something valuable over the years for kings and queens. And all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour, and wheat, and beast, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, 
and slaves and souls of men. Look at that. Souls of men. And the fruits that thou lusteth after are departed from thee, and all the things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. They're not going to be able to find anything. Nothing will be left upon the earth. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her, that spirit of influence, seducing and, and, and all of that, they were rich off of it. The power, uh, those of influence, those who, uh, who struggle, that just stepped over anybody to get power, they're going to be weeping, shall stand afar off of the fear of her torment. They don't, the weeping and the wailing, just the hearing of her crying and wailing and pain and torment from the burning fire and them being close, they don't want to be anywhere near because uh, that's something that they're afraid will happen to them. And saying, alas, in verse 16, alas, alas, thy great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, they're referring to Babylon, which represents the world. We'll bring that out in a moment. But all of these things that you find belong to Babylon, the things of the world. And for in one hour, so great riches and come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea, they stood afar off. Didn't want to get anywhere near because of what was happening to her and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying, what city is likened to this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and they begin to cry, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heavens, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you of her. In other words, all of this stuff God's going to avenge and take away. All this stuff that people want power over and money and, 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 and all of this stuff, God's going to take it away from them. He's going to put it away. He's going to yank it from them. Because in verse 21 it says, And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpeteers shall be heard no more and all in thee. And no craftsman or whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth. For by the sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood, look at this, of prophets and of saints and all that were slain upon the earth. She was responsible for them. So I'm, I'm preaching about the fall of Babylon. And I want to kind of bring that to where we're at even tonight. There are two manifestations of Babylon. There is what the world looks at as a religious Babylon. It's hard to imagine that a religion, sometimes religion kind of turns me off just a little bit. I, I don't know about religions. Oh, it's, we're this, and we're that, and we're this, and we're that. I think it's about relationship, and it's not religion. I, I, I really believe that because the Bible says that Babylon will be a religion. And it's no secret. It's, it's not something that's hidden. Turn in the book of Revelation, and you'll find... That religion is the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. And the spirit of influence is the Babylon Church. And it's two things. It's religious. Everything in the world will be about one religion, the Roman Catholics. It will be about one man that will be overseer of the world. And then it's the commercialism, which is the Babylonian which represents the world. So you got two manifestations of Babylon, the religious, and then you got the commercialism. And that's what the power struggle is. Everybody's in it. It's all about money, power. It's all about prestige, an office, fame, glory. You know what? If you've noticed this, I don't know how you feel about Well, I know how you feel about it. If you, if you have the Holy Ghost and you're, you're, you live for God, that stuff don't mean anything to you. I don't, I don't care. To have my name in lights. 
I don't care to eat uh, some big fancy uh, meal uh, at the table, you know, with uh, some prestigious, you know, or celebrity or something like that, and big time. That's not my thing. I, I, I don't even feel comfortable with that. Amen? But just give me a good old-fashioned uh, church and a worship service and a prayer meeting and uh, I, I, let me talk about the Lord. And, 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 you know, those things don't matter. They, they have not, no meaning to me, but some people, it's that spirit of moving up and wanting that, that influence. And so two as one, both of these will be judged. The Bible says... The two manifestations of Babylon, the religious and the commercial Babylon, they are going to be judged at one time. They're going to go down at one time. In one hour, both worlds will go down. That's how powerful God, he sent his mighty angel. Aren't you thankful that God has a mighty angel? God has, he don't have weak stuff. That, somebody made a statement. They said, you know, uh, they, they said, you know, my grandpa used to, he used to tell me, he said, when times got hard, he said he didn't want the weak stuff. He needed the, the good stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, that hard liquor, something that would lay you out and you wouldn't have to think for a while. And I thought about that. Okay, that's some pretty tough stuff. Well, one thing about it, God don't have anything weak when it comes to his power and his glory, amen, and his angels, amen, and they're not going to have to struggle. It doesn't take them long to wipe out the Babylon. And so there are so many similarities, and I won't get into all of them tonight with the Antichrist and, and Revelation 17. And the two divisions of Babylon, we have the two manifestations, which people refer to as the religious and the commercialism, but the two divisions, uh, as many times referred to it, you'll hear it was called the mystery Babylon and then the commercial Babylon. But the two divisions basically is the religious because the mystery uh, is mentioned at the, uh, the birth of uh, the, 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 the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'll say this, and I've heard people make this statement the past couple weeks. I'm not criticizing or putting down, even the Catholics, they will tell you that, that they don't agree with the Pope and some of the stuff that's going on. And the Roman, that, that good Catholic people that I know will tell you straight up, said, I'm not for all that stuff about the Pope. I think that's wrong, you know, and everything. But the Bible speaks of that rising up of a Babylon influence. Now, the mystery Babylon or the religious Babylon, there are symbols, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you these real quick. And the mystery or the religious uh, Babylon, chapter 17, just a refresher of what we talked about last week, uh, the symbol is the harlot woman identified with Rome. That is Rome. Uh, that is her dwelling place. That is her power. Uh, the woman was a mother. Remember, she had daughters, so that meant there were more than one. There was an offspring of that, which were more spirits, guilty of religious abominations. All the abominations and corruptness that would go on with religion in, 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 in the name of religion. People would do evil and things and then call it religion or, or say that there's nothing wrong with it. That's an abomination. And that's what this is. In chapter 17, you go back, you know, uh, all these fact checkers, they want to say, well, what's the fact about, that's the fact, read chapter 17 and the abominations uh, talk about these that go against, and so destroyed by political power that support her, any, any, anybody that supports any evil, I don't care if they call themselves a Christian even today, if they support any evil, that's an abomination to God. Anybody that tries to preach behind a pulpit and wants to cover up sin, and they, they may get it over our heads and say, hey, look, I fooled you. You know, you don't fool God. That's an abomination. Amen. That's what the Bible says. That's that spirit of Babylon. Now, the commercial Babylon. Let's look at that. What's the symbolism there? The symbol is a great city. In the chapter 17, the symbolism is Rome. It refers to the great city, the world, a great city. And it, it's identified strictly, mainly, commercial-wise, as ports. In the Bible, when it refers to ports, it's talking about your big cities. Have you noticed that most of your bigger cities that are mostly corrupt are on the seashore? Think about it. Well, New Orleans, New York. Amen. 
California, look on the coast. Go, go in the world and you see some of these ports in Italy and some of these places like that. Some of the most corrupt Jesus, even during his time, it was Jonah that disobeyed God. He said, I'm going to take a vacation. You know, you need to go to Nineveh. I'm not going, I, I'm not, I, those people are crazy. I'm not preaching revival in Nineveh. Them people kill me. So I'm going on vacation. Where'd he go? Jericho. And so, so anyway, it's where God got his attention. He, he found himself in the, bo- in the bottom of a well. And it was there that God got a hold of his life. And, you know, I, I really feel like maybe, maybe tonight, maybe, maybe that America deserves to be swallowed up. And we're in the belly of a whale, but let us pray to get out and go do what God has called America to do. Amen. I just wonder if that's where we are sometimes. And we may have to deal with some stuff like, you know, we don't think about Brother Jonah here. It's like, that's seaweed. Uh, what is that nasty stuff he's digesting here? What, uh, this is nasty. We're going to have to put up with some stuff like this in America, but we may be praying, God, just get me out of this predicament. I, you know, and, and, and no doubt he prayed. He, had, he prayed like he never prayed, and God you know, send him on his way. But God can put us on course. I believe America can pray and praise our way out of this situation. Amen. But they were guilty of greed. Habitation was a great city. The marketplace, they were destroyed by God. They both intertwined. Both will always in the end time intertwine. Religion and worldliness will combine. Now, the true church, that's why I said, I don't know if we really ought to be called religion anymore. Because religion in the end time is uh, intertwined with worldliness. If you got a relationship and you're called by the name of Jesus and you're brought out by the name of Jesus, you're not intertwined with the world. Amen. He said you're not of the world. Amen. Amen. We're, we're separate. And so uh, the breath and prophecy shouldn't surprise us when it talks about the coming of the Messiah. I want to show you something here that's interesting. Think of what the Old Testament said about the first coming of the Messiah, the prophecy. Micah said the Messiah would come out of Bethlehem. Hosea said the Messiah would come out of Egypt. Malachi said the Messiah would come out of the temple. Zechariah said that Messiah would come out of Messiah would come out of Zion. Isaiah said that Messiah would come out of Galilee. Which one of these are true? They're all true. When you look at it, they're all true. So isn't it strange to say that Babylon is falling? In other words, there's not one just particular Babylon. The whole world is considered Babylon. Every city that is corrupt and not of God is considered a Babylon. So when you say Babylon is falling, oh, that's everywhere. So we get different meanings, the commercial, the religious, that they come at different times throughout the book of Revelation, the great tribulation. This passage is so much very similar to that of the ancient times, uh, the doom regarding the wicked cities. Look, let me tell you, God don't put up with too much stuff too long. I, I, I was listening to somebody just last night. I, I, I turned them on, and they, they said, look, this thing could turn to Sodom real quick, and God's going to have enough. Psst. But he gives the opportunity to save his people. He always gives an opportunity. There's always an escape for God's people, people of the righteous. Well, God, what are we going to do? This is a mess. Get out of here. Don't look back. Amen. So when you look at that, God destroyed uh, Sodom. John was caught up in the spirit by, go back and read the book of John. And even in Revelation, he was called... He was kind of caught in the spirit singing about these uh, prophetic doom songs. Kind of lyrics about the doom that was to come upon the earth in Babylon. And so Revelation 18 is a symbolic city. Um, Now, some have thought it to be the future rebuilt of Babylon of the Euphrates River where we think of Babylon in times past in the Middle East. Now it's just a desolate desert in the modern day Iraq. Now, many years ago, a man by the name of Saddam Hussein was outspoken in his desire to resurrect. He said time and time again, you can go back and look, you can YouTube that, but he said, I'm going to resurrect Babylon. That's that's really tough words to say right there. 
in all of its glory because you're saying I will bring back the evil and that's how wicked he was. And so he obviously failed because it's conceivable that a rebuilt Babylon would have to be a world economic universal type center with the wealth of the world. Now, there are two things that bring this one world government into existence that you need to keep your eyes on. And I've already heard it, I don't know, maybe 50 times in the past, I don't know, probably, you know, a couple weeks. There are two key elements, oil and gold. That is the two things, oil and gold. The one thing that can cripple uh, the world, that can cripple even our country, is the shutdown of oil. And already we've heard statements, well, we're going to get rid of the oil. Well, there's the start. And then there's a demand for the gold price to contain and control the monetary system. And so this is a symbol of Babylon. This is a symbol of where it started. When the Lord was on the earth, he spoke of the great hatred that the world had for him and his own. Now, in, in John 15, 18 through 19, he said, they're going to have, there will be great hatred for, for me, is what the Lord said. Oh, Lord, they're going to hate you and my own. You know who that is? That's you and I. Anybody that loves the Lord, we are his own. And so people are going to hate us because of his name's sake. Already you see the attack on churches. You know why? Because that spirit in these people hate the name of the Lord. They don't know you personally. It's not so much about your beliefs. Of course, if you're not on board with what they think, then you're wrong. But they don't like that spirit that is in them, the name of Jesus. And so religions today say, well, we'll just be a religious organization. We don't have to, we'll just be religious. We don't need the name. We don't have to baptize. Matter of fact, it'd be optional. You see where this is a spirit that it's been going on for some time. So I don't know why, but the Lord just strongly dealt with me about this. We're so caught up in religion, but really it's relationship. I'll say it again. I mean, I, 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 it's, you know, it's got to be, there's only one way to be saved. That's baptism in the name of Jesus. That's the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. But what does that do? That creates a relationship. That puts God in you and you in God. Amen. Would you give the Lord a praise? When you get married, you take on that name, don't you? <laughs> praise God. You know, uh, that character just comes with it when you take on that name. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I think that's good. I mean, you know, Sister Julia, you know, you just have to take on that name. Well, when you get God's spirit, you take on his name. I'm thankful for my name. Brother Johnny James was the, the greatest Jesus name preacher I ever heard. A black minister, awesome man of God, and uh, he wore turtlenecks all the time. He looked so funny, a little head, big old turtleneck, you know. And he just, he, he and we, we, you see him in town, he'd dress up in a suit. He'd always wear a turtleneck and a sport coat every, every church service. He never wore a tie and all of that. And uh, when you see him in town, he wouldn't have the sport coat on, but he'd have the turtleneck on. And he had uh, turtlenecks that said, Johnny James, Jesus. And somebody said, what is Johnny James Jesus? He said, because I took on the name Jesus. He said, I know I'm Johnny, and my last name is James. He said, but when I went under, I got the name Jesus attached to it, so I'm Johnny James Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So uh, the world is a combination of commerce and religion. But the Bible says there will be a great falling of this, and boy, will it hit hard. And so... The Bible speaks in verses 1 through 3 about the illumination of his glory. The angel will come down and place judgment. The Bible says that uh, they're going to come down from heaven, and it's going to be so fresh from heaven that they're going to glow. You know what? When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you glow. There's a glow on your face. When Moses come down off the mount, he was glowing. His face was yellow. It scared him. What is wrong with you? You know, he went up there in no tanning bed. He was up there... Uh, getting a hold of God's presence, amen. And, uh, and boy, he, he, was, he was glowing. 
Isn't there a glow when you just get the Holy Ghost and something comes over you and you just get excited, just a glow in your face? Hey, look, what about precious saints of the Lord? I witnessed it firsthand. My mom and, and my dad, I remember when dad came, when the Lord took him, whatever, he had a glow on his face. He just kind of went on to be with the Lord. Amen. My mom, I didn't get to be there when, when, Pap, when Papa passed away, but she said there was a glow come on his face. When the presence of the Lord is fresh and it comes on and it's a taking away or a coming in, there is a glow. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not worried about the darkness that we're in. I'm just worried about can I glow and be a light. Amen. And so they were fresh from the presence of God. Amen. Amen. My clicker's clicking. So I, I'm moving fast. The Babylon's going to fall. Everybody say, help, help me preach we'll get through. Babylon's going to fall. Babylon's going to fall. And so it speaks that she's living like a queen. Could I tell you the world's living like a queen tonight? They think they got everything, got all the answers, and uh, they expect money in the bank, and they expect to keep on living uh, the way they're living. And uh, uh, somebody said, the other day said, uh, yeah, today they said, well, I don't, they said there's going to be some major changes. And she said, do we still get paid Friday? And they said, I hope so. You know, there's going to be some changes, amen? But you know what? I believe there's fixing to be some spiritual changes. Now, I heard Brother Mangan uh, speak. He, Brother Mangan had COVID about a week ago. Brother, uh, uh, Brother Mangan, Anthony Mangan, uh, that pastors a big church there in Alexandria. And uh, he had COVID and he spoke. Uh, they were supposed to have the bike conference this past week, and they canceled it because of COVID. And Brother Mangan uh, gave a little short segment. I, I'll have to post it. it. It's really good where he spoke. And he said, I'm going to tell you, the Lord has spoke uh, to many, many preachers. He said, not just me, to my Brother Mangan, but many preachers. And said, God said, I'm about to pour out my spirit. Woo-hoo, everybody's talking about that. That's the end time. That is the... Uh, the, the, the spirit of uh, the, the Joel prophesied, you know, end time revival. He said, no, it's not just the spirit of the Holy Ghost, but God's about to pour out. When he pours out something on you, he's going to pour out something that's going to give us supernatural power and authority to deal with some things. And let me tell you something, with the things we're facing in this world today, we need that kind of stuff. Amen. we got to have that. We, we've we've got to have it, you know. You know, I I, I mean, we got to have that stuff to get through this life. Well, Brother David, how do I have it? I, I need a dose of that. Is there a vaccine for it? No, there's not a vaccine for that. Amen. But a good old-fashioned prayer meeting, a good old uh, Holy Ghost uh, infilling again, a good old get in the Word. Somebody needs to get baptized in the Word again. Somebody needs to get up 2 o'clock. Brother David, i got to work the next day. I know, but a sacrifice, obedience is better than sacrifice. I, I, I challenge you. I, I, I'll do what my dad used to say. I'll dare you. Well, I tell you what, I'll double dog dare you to get up 2 o'clock one morning and just pray for authority and some direction and some power in your life. It's going to take some of this kind of stuff to help us get through some of the things that we're facing. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Let me tell you something. The Lord dealt with me about this. If ever there was a time to be different from everybody else, it's now. Amen. God said, come out from among them. Amen, saith the Lord. And then he goes on. We got that up there? Yeah, we do. Thank you, Brother Ryan. And touch not the unclean thing. Leave this junk alone. Hear me. I think it's time to church... That, let's get rid of the dirty movies. Let's get rid of the junk on the internet. Let's don't listen to so, some of those ugly music that's got filth and language. Let's be careful. I, I mean, I'm preaching here. We better be careful. It said get away from some unclean things because he said if you do, he said I will receive you. Now that's two things right there. You go back to be the Lord. But the other thing, too, is he said, I'll listen to what you got going on down there on that earth. I believe that. I think it's time, if I could preach a message and everybody could hear this phrase in the world, would they please hear, come out from among them. Who is them? Anything that's not of this book, 
and has lifted up the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, but I don't cuss, I don't fuss, and I don't run somebody down, and I don't smoke, and I don't drink, and then turn around and say a little prayer with everybody and say, well, this is what Jesus would do. No, he said, come out from among them and be ye separate. I'm not going to be like everybody else. And I'm thankful to be a part of a church that's not like everybody else. Amen. Saith the Lord, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Boy, that has hit me hard this week. God, I want you to receive me. I want you to welcome me. Praise God. He said, if not, you're going to share the sins that Babylon, when they fall, like her. You are going to fall, and her sins who've reached heaven, I'm going to double. I'm going to, it's going to be double trouble. And I can show you several scriptures. I won't do it tonight. But did you know people that persecute the saints of God? Hear me now. People that want to persecute or commit evil and do things to the church or the saints of God, the Bible says that they will be burned double in hell. Oh, I don't believe that. Hell's just hell. No, it's not. Uh Uh-uh. If the Bible says that it's going to be worse and it's going to be double, and she's getting double trouble right here just for doing what she did against the church, that's just the word. We don't need the world. He said, alas, that great city which had ships, that had merchants. Look, everything's about Amazon. Everything's about wealth. Everything's about gas, petroleum, oil, music industry. Everything is about just sports. But that's, that's going to come tumbling down because God said that's, that's, not, that's not a me. Hey Amen. Would you stand? <coughs> the commercial, the religious, he said the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. Do y'all know what a millstone is? Anybody ever heard the story about millstones? That's how they, 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 would, they, would, they would execute somebody in the Bible or somebody did something wrong, especially in warfare. They would tie a huge millstone around their neck, and guess what they do? they throw them in the water. It would break their neck, and they would sink to the bottom of the water. The devil, wonder how many people he's got the stone around their neck just trying to push them to the edge. But the mighty angel said, I took up a stone and I reversed it and I threw it into the sea. In other words, I took it off. Now, this is reminiscence of Jeremiah to Caesarea to bind a stone, the text of Jeremiah and cast it into the Euphrates. If you remember that story, go back and read 51, Jeremiah 51, 61 through 64. He said, Thus Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil. In other words, when I throw you down with this millstone, you're not coming back up. You're going to sink. And so that is, and, and they shall be weary. He's going to make them weary. Amen. And so, anyway, I want to read that one scripture that talks about the church. Matthew 18, 16, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, that's Matthew 18, 6, which believe in me, if you offend my little one, you offend my people, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. In other words, that's how God feels about you. If you're going to mess with one of my children or my people, or one of my little ones, he referred to the little ones as his flock, the sheep of his pastures. Hey, isn't that good news? Don't you, mess with, don't you mess with them. I got something for you, okay? I got something, something out there, you know. And so she, she led them into sin, but she was escorted to her doom. Amen. The fall of Babylon. Now, what does this mean? is the blood of the prophets and the saints and all of that were slain on the earth were avenged for the name of the Lord. So where, where are we at tonight? We're at the place where the world is being built up. 
religious world government, the monetary, everything's trying to get to a point to where it can be all controlled. You, you know why, oh, and make everything, you, you hear that story about the reason we need a one world government, we need one world money, it just makes things easier. You can do it here, and if you go over to Japan, or if you go over to Israel, man, you can just, nuh -uh. It's not about making things easy. You know what it's about? Controlling you. If I can, if I can, if you do this, then I can do that. If you, you know, already, already, look at what's happening in our world today. They're doing everything they can to try to control us. Amen. And so, God, He's saying, "Come out from among." I'm for anything of convenience. Technology. I like technology convenience. I got stuff that I, I, was, tell, I was talking to Sister Gorman, and I was telling her about school. She said, well, tell me about what you do at school. I was telling her, she said, what? Sister Roberts tried to explain about the smart board, and she said, well, I used to have one of those. It was a whiteboard. She said, no, 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 this is not a whiteboard. You know, this is like a, a smart board where you can do everything on the board. And, I, and she can't relate to that. My mom probably can't relate to some of the stuff we're probably doing now. If she would walk into class, she'd be like, what in the world is this? You know, because things have changed so much. And you know what? Sister Robin, we got all this stuff now, and I still can't. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure stuff out. But what I'm saying is, everything, I love convenience, and I love things. But one thing that I don't want this word to be just an inconvenience. I don't want the word to be a something to be a substitute that would take, come out from among some things that's taking you away from what you need to be doing for the kingdom of God. Hey, look, that coming out from among some things, if, if you're doing things that's taking you away from your time with God, you might want to recheck and re redo your schedule. Come out from among that and do what you know and require to do for the Lord. Lift up your hands.